O God, whose only begotten Son by his life, his death, and his resurrection hath purchased for us the reward of eternal salvation, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating on these mysteries in the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may both imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Those are words taken from today's collect or opening prayer in honor of the Holy Rosary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessed Alan Del Roche was a Dominican friar and priest who lived during the 15th century. He was an eminent theologian and was famous for his sermons. Blessed Alan was chosen by our dearest Lord and the Blessed Mother to promote once again the prayerful recitation of the Most Holy Rosary after many, if not most of the faithful, had neglected to pray it for more than a century. Although St. Dominic had received the rosary directly from the hands of the Blessed Mother and had preached its use extensively, the rosary had fallen into disuse as if it had been forgotten and buried. According to one observer, the wicked scheming and jealousy of the devil were largely responsible for getting people to neglect to pray the Holy Rosary. And with this powerful prayer no longer being recited, it seemed that there would be a mighty obstacle in the way for the full flowing of God's holy grace upon the people of Christendom. And furthermore, the whole of Europe endured a most terrible plague during this time known as the Black Death. And finally, the membership of the church had to endure a most terrible heresy as well as a tragic schism that brought great division and multiple popes. But after this terrible series of trials and tribulations had ceased, Our Lady told Blessed Alan de la Roche to revive devotion to the Most Holy Rosary. And it was most appropriate that a spiritual son of St. Dominic should be chosen for such great work. Blessed Alan began his holy mission in the year 1460, after a special warning and admonition given to him by our Lord himself, who spurred him on to spread devotion to the rosary. The Son of God and Son of Mary literally spoke to blessed Alan from the sacred host during the sacrifice of the Mass. Our Lord asked his chosen priest the following question, How can you crucify me again so soon? Blessed Alan responded, What did you say, Lord? And Jesus answered, You crucified me once before by your sins, and I would willingly be crucified rather than have my father offended by the sins you used to commit. But you are crucifying me again now because you have all the learning and all the understanding that you need to preach my mother's rosary, and you are not doing so, unquote. The Son of God continued to reproach Blessed Alan, saying, If you only did this, you could teach many souls the right path and lead them away from sin. But you are not doing it, and so you yourself are guilty of the sins they are committing. Again, unquote. This terrible reproach, this criticism aimed at Blessed Alan caused the Dominican friar to resolve solemnly to preach the rosary unceasingly for the rest of his earthly life. And Our Lady, too. Our Lady, our Blessed Mother, spoke to him one day to inspire him to preach the Holy Rosary more and more. Our Lady said to Blessed Alan, You were a great sinner in your youth, but I obtained the grace of your conversion from my son. Had such a thing been possible, I would have liked to have gone through all kinds of suffering to save you, because converted sinners are a glory to me. And the Blessed Mother ended saying, And I would have done this also to make you worthy of preaching my rosary far and wide. Unquote. And finally, even St. Dominic appeared to Blessed Alan and told him, the great results of his preaching were due to the fact 
that Dominic had preached the Holy Rosary unceasingly. St. Dominic said to Blessed Alan, see the wonderful results I have had through preaching the Holy Rosary. You and all those who love Our Lady ought to do the same, so that by means of this holy practice of the Rosary, you may draw all people to a life of virtue, unquote. Heaven wants the Rosary prayed regularly. Our Lord, our Blessed Mother, and St. Dominic himself. Blessed Alan de la Roche did wondrous things in spreading devotion to the Holy Rosary of the Blessed Mother. Blessed Alan did not seek to change the Rosary. He did not add novelties to the prayer or increase the number of mysteries, nor did he seek to subtract prayers or shorten existing ones. Rather, he simply reintroduced the Holy Rosary to a people that had forgotten this most powerful prayer. Now, in September of 1972, Anabali Bugnini, the so-called, quote-unquote, liturgical expert, who had already sought to destroy the traditional Latin Mass, desired to attack the Rosary. Bognini's plan was to rearrange the rosary so that the Our Father would be recited only once at the beginning of the rosary, and that the Hail Mary would be edited and shortened so that it would only include the so-called biblical portion of the prayer. That is, the salutation of the angel would be kept, namely, Hail Mary, full of grace, but the second half of the prayer, the Holy Mary, Mother of God, would be said only at the end of each tenth Hail Mary. And furthermore, Bugnini would also put together a new public version of the rosary for church services that would consist of lots of readings, songs, and sermons, but only one decade of the rosary being prayed by the faithful. And yes, Bugnini would even suggest a different order of the mysteries of the Holy Rosary. Now, although Pope Paul VI had agreed to the destruction of the traditional Roman rituals, he would not go along with this attack upon the Holy Rosary. Pope Paul VI responded negatively to the proposal, saying, quote, the faithful would conclude that the Pope has changed the Rosary, and the psychological effect would be disastrous. Any change in it, the Pope continued, cannot but lessen the confidence of the simple and the poor. The Pope then admonished Bugnini, saying that the rosary is to remain single in form and unchanged from what it now is. Let any new forms of Marian devotion take their place alongside the traditional rosary. Unquote. There would be a Novus Ordo Mise, but not a new rosary. The traditional rosary had been spared the fate of the traditional mass, at least for a short time. But the liturgical revolution became a revolution against piety that would eventually infect the rosary. The traditional form of the rosary was codified and standardized by the Dominican Pope, St. Pius V, and that would be overthrown with a new set of mysteries, with five additional decades, making a total of 20 in all, and a most awkward cycle of reciting the mysteries during the week. Now, we were told by liturgical reformers that the old mass was lacking something, that it needed to be updated and reformed, that it didn't meet the needs of modern man. We were told that was the case, and now we are told that the traditional form of the rosary was not Christological. It was not as Christ-centered as it ought to be. That it required new mysteries that would enlighten and illuminate those stuck back in the Middle Ages. And so we were led to believe that the Holy Rosary given by our Blessed Mother directly to St. Dominic was somehow defective and that it needed to be reformed and updated. Of course, as is often the case with radical changes to traditional forms, none of it was obligatory. 
but rather the changes were suggested as something new, something novel, that could be incorporated into praying the rosary in order to revive its use amongst the faithful. Well, let me tell you, it took about 24 hours before nearly every religious house or parish prayer group in the Latin Rite added the luminous mysteries of the rosary. 24 hours, that's all it took for their discerning whether to use this new way. Any unwillingness to comply immediately with this new set of mysteries might suggest schismatic leanings or anti-papal positions. Optional things quickly become compulsory within the modern membership of the church because the party line must be held. As mentioned before, Blessed Allen did not seek to change the rosary. He did not add to the prayer or increase the number of mysteries or decades of the rosary, nor did he seek to subtract prayers or shorten existing ones. He simply reintroduced the traditional rosary to a people who had forgotten the wonderful prayer. But today's reformers, including Dominicans, not only change the rosary, but also discount the supernatural origin of the prayer as being given to St. Dominic directly from the hands of the Blessed Mother. In reporting the change to the rosary, the New York Times, the paper of note, the New York Times observed that the modern membership of the church has witnessed many new things in the modern world, such as bishops visiting and praying in mosques and synagogues, ecumenical dialogue, new rituals, females serving at the altar, but another frontier, the New York Times says, was crossed when a significant change was made to the rosary, which was a signature method of Catholic prayer for centuries now, unquote. Now, in his letter to the Philippians, St. Paul writes about the three principal categories, a triune set of saving mysteries connected to Christ. St. Paul teaches that though the Son of God was by nature God, he emptied himself and took the form of human nature. And more than this, Christ was also obedient unto death, even death of the cross. And because of this, God highly exalted him, raising his sacred humanity of Christ victoriously on Easter Sunday. Here again we see the wonderful trinity of mysteries so well expressed in the three sets of mysteries, joyful, sorrowful, and glorious. Not four parts, but a trinity, three parts. The traditional form of the rosary shares the rhythm of human life with three parts. We get up in the morning, we rest at noon, and we go to bed at night. Three parts. And we recite the Angelus three times a day. Again, a triune set of mysteries seems most fitting. When our Blessed Mother gave the rosary to St. Dominic as a powerful instrument to defeat heretics, she clearly stated, quote, Preach my Psalter, made up of 150 Hail Marys and 15 Our Fathers, unquote. Yes, Our Lady connected the prayer of the rosary to the Psalter, the book of the Psalms and the Holy Bible, made up of 150 Psalms of King David. And consider, too, that when Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette at Lourdes, the Blessed Mother asked the teenage girl if she would be so kind as to visit with her at the grotto for 15 days. Not 20, 15 days. Thus again, corresponding to the number of mysteries in the Holy Rosary, which the two would pray together during nearly all of the apparitions. And considering that yesterday was first Saturday, Remember what our Blessed Mother said at Fatima regarding the conditions for making a good first Saturday, namely going to confession, receiving Holy Communion, reciting the Holy Rosary, and yes, keeping her company for 15 minutes while meditating upon, you guessed it, the 15 mysteries of the Rosary. Again, directly from our Blessed Mother's mouth. It is interesting that when a person from Portugal suggests praying the rosary with others, he will say, let's pray um terco, 
That's a term meaning a five-decade rosary or one-third or un turco of a 15-decade rosary. Consider, too, that the powerful traditional rosary proceeds in a most orderly fashion, as if it were a wondrous symphony with a perfect flow of mysteries. The joyful mysteries on Monday, recounting the wonder of the Lord's conception and birth, along with Mary's loving surrender to the will of God, fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum, followed on Tuesday by his suffering and death and the sorrowful mysteries, and then on Wednesdays, the victory of his resurrection and glorification. This same pattern is then repeated with the joyful on Thursday, the sorrowful Friday, and the glorious on Saturday. And as for Sunday, the set of mysteries chosen depends upon the liturgical season, whether it recounts our Lord's birth, death, or resurrection. But now we have so-called mysteries of light, or luminous mysteries, which have been awkwardly placed on Thursdays for people praying the rosary. And in order to make room for this untraditional insertion, the joyful mysteries would have to be moved to Saturday, where in turn they would displace the glorious mysteries. As one learned Catholic author observed, quote, this one change alone shattered the symphonic progression of the rosary from birth to passion to resurrection. The author continued, with this change, the rosary cycle would collapse into a jumble of disconnected events as the liturgical week progresses. And finally, we have on Mondays the joyful, the birth, on Tuesdays the sorrowful passion, on Wednesdays the glorious resurrection, good so far, but then we come to the luminous mysteries on Thursday, recounting our Lord's public life, followed by his death on Friday, and then his birth on Saturday, followed by his resurrection. Could anything be more discombobulated? From Calvary to Bethlehem to the empty tomb? No, only those desperate to embrace every novelty would support such changes. Let us pray that we will have the revival evermore of the traditional rosary of our Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.